Hi all and welcome to our step-by-step -step guide to the sacred hunt event introduced with the Age of War. This time-limited event is intended to be active only on certain dates, though how it will work in the future remains to be seen. This video is a complete guide to the event from A to Z so that you can unlock this very nude follower. And while our examples will be based on the Exile Lands, we also briefly show all relevant locations on Zipta. Before we start, if you miss Zipta, a DLC or got friends who don't have the base game, we have secured a special affiliate link and discount code for our viewers that you can use or share. Using it supports us and gives you another 20% off any current Steam prices, making it possible to snap up a truly epic deal that be on top of any discounted prices for the DLCs, Zipta or even the Complete Edition. Now to the Sacred Hunt. This Jebel Sag event is only active during certain event cycles, and it is unclear if or how often we will see it returning in future ages. Make sure to follow us or Funcom on socials to stay up to date. During the event, you can face off against different foes and mini-bosses, gather event currency and unlock new unique rewards. But let's walk you through the event and all the steps required. The first step is knowing what happens once the event is active. One thing you'll notice is that you might be ambushed by werehyenas during the night and killing them will grant you gnarled fangs, which is the currency for this event. They also drop a hunter satchel, which contains a few materials as well as a flesh map. The map is technically a hint to find the quest hub, however, this location is spoiled by the fact that there is a very obvious light beam that indicates this not-so-secret spot during any time of day. Before you travel there, you should dispatch enough nightly werehyenas to have gathered at least 11 gnarled fangs. It might even be useful to have at least 12 fangs the first time around. Step 2 and before we go to the quest hub. An important element of this new event is an NPC called Sil the Wanderer. He'll visit your tavern and should be interacted with to learn a recipe for a special lure. Do keep this in mind if you don't have a tavern yet, as not being able to learn this recipe won't allow you to unlock the follower from the final event boss. Step 3 is to head to the hub for this event. You'll be returning here quite frequently. First, talk to the bloody tongue of Jabal Sag. This NPC not only explains the mechanics of the event, but also gives hints to the locations of the champions we need to seek out. Most importantly, make sure to go through all the second dialogue options, as this will teach you sanctification, which is yet another event lore recipe you need. The other options can be skipped, though you can currently learn the Jabal Sag religion here, the Bower of Jabal Sag, if you go through the third option. By the way, if you want to opt out of the nightly Verhyena attacks or are simply not interested in participating, you can do so by choosing the dialogue option I wish to leave the hunt. You can also opt back in at any time during the event if you change your mind. The second NPC in the camp is a trader called Master of the Hunt. To purchase items here, you'll need, you guessed it, the gnarled fangs from the Verhyenas that spawn at night. By the way, for a preview of all the unique event rewards you can buy here, check out our overview at the end of this video. But for now, in order to progress through the event, you need to buy at least one Warpaint, or even two, as having a backup is advised in case of death. You also need to buy a champion lure for 10 fangs. So with that in mind, and as just mentioned, having at least 12 fangs is recommended before moving on to the next step. You will need a lot more fangs later though, but let's go through this step by step. So what's this all about? In short, you will be using a champion lure at 4 locations around the Exile Lands or on Sipta if that's where you are. These lures will attract a mini-boss creature at each location, which you will have to fight and defeat. Not only that, but you will also have to fight nude wearing no armor at all, and you need to apply the event warpaint. Since accidents happen, having bought extra warpaints is recommended as they do not survive an untimely death. But more on that fight shortly, when we take on the first special boss. So where are these locations and is there an order to them? 
You can locate the three main locations through the hints given by the NPC in this camp as mentioned. They can be done in any order you like. There is also a fourth location, but more on that later. We'll go through each location in the Exile Lands and the mechanics. For the I Love Sipta, check our timestamp. They have all been added to the end of this video. Step 4 is to locate and take on the mini-bosses at the three main locations. Our first location is close to Buckner Bay in 07. Before we get started, it's advisable to set up a respawn point before each fight. Should you die, you only have a minute or two to get back into the battle before the boss will despawn and will require a new costly lure to be respawned. Here you'll find this new offering stone. Move the champion lure to your shortcut bar. Then place the lure on the stone as this will spawn our first boss, which is a panther. So why do we have to fight with no armor and with the special war paint? Well, the bosses that materialize have a million hit points and if we fight normally, we simply won't do much damage at all. However, by applying the war paint and undressing, we receive a special challenge above, making it possible to take large chunks of their hit points with every swing. Beyond that, the fights are just like fighting the regular version of the animals, so use your favorite weapons and buff up. Most importantly, make sure to have stamina to sprint and dodge out when needed and heal up frequently. That goes for all bosses in this guide. You can also use followers or bring a friend to all the fights we show you. However, unless wearing no armor and applying the war paint, support won't help much at all. Once downed, you will get a nice stack of gnarled fangs, as well as a new important trophy for the kill. In this case, it's the brand of the panther. We will need brands from each boss type to get where we're going. And of course, don't forget to harvest the boss for various other resources. Now head back to the hub to secure more war paint and a new champion lure as needed before heading to the next location. Our second location is here at the Black Galleon in I-7 or more correctly below it on the north side. Here you'll find another offering stone. Move the champion lure once again to your shortcut bar, then place the lure on the stone as this will spawn the boss rhino. Once done, collect the fangs and the brand of the rhino. Then harvest it for other resources. Once again, head back to the hub to restock as needed. Moving on, we head to our next location. Here, just south of the Temple of Frost, on the border of D and E14. Placing a lure on the offering stone here will spawn a mammoth boss. Like with the previous bosses, the fight itself is just like fighting other mammoths in this case. Once done, collect the fangs and the brand of the mammoth as we'll need that and the other brands shortly. then harvest it for other resources. Step 5. With all three brands secured, head back to the quest hub. Now you have two options. Both require at least one champion lure, so go ahead and buy one now. If you're only looking to unlock the unique follower from the final event boss, then you can use our timestamps to go to step 7 of the guide, fully skipping step 6. 
On the other hand, if you want to experience the regular version of the final boss or just grind for extra fangs, then our next step will give you a sneak peek of that boss. However, do note that if you take on this boss now, you will need to collect a full new set of the three brands for the final boss later. Next, interact with the author of Jabal Sag. If you don't have the options here, make sure to have gone through the second dialogue option with the bloody tongue of Jabal Sag, as to get the option to craft a grand champion lure. Place all the brands and a regular champion lure in the altar, then craft a grand champion lure. Step 6. With the Grand Champion Lure crafted, talk to the Master of the Hunt as to buy a Potion of the Hunt for 3 fangs. Note that this item has a very short 1 minute decay timer, and that drinking it will take you into the boss instance, so make sure to be prepared before you buy it. Once inside, you will find yet another Offering Stone, and yes, you guessed it, this is for the Grand Champion Lure. Once placed, a werebear boss will spawn and like previous fights, you need the active buff from fighting with no armor and with a war paint buff. Unlike the previous bosses, this one might be a bit harder for some. In addition to almost 1.8 million hit points, the boss also has some double and some more crazy attack combos. As mentioned earlier, keep your stamina up to be able to dodge roll when needed and to get some distance to heal up. After your success, grab the large stack of Gnarled Fangs and make sure to harvest the boss for resources, as this one drops a Tablet of Power. Consuming a Tablet of Power grants you a nice chunk of 60 knowledge points to unlock more recipes for your character. Now, this is the boss you can also get as a follower, well a smaller version of it. But in order to do so, we will have to return here as a last step. Before that, it is time to visit your tavern, as we need yet another version of the lure to achieve that goal. Before moving to step 7, a quick reminder. Hopefully you have paid attention to your tavern and already found and talked to Sil the Wanderer. A tip if you play with friends is that you can also visit their taverns, should Sil have appeared there but not yet at yours. Step 7. If you have another champion lure and warpaint, then head to Almeria in H7, where the large Stygian fortress is located. If not, head to the quest hub first to restock. We are looking for a fourth offering stone, and to reach it, you need to get into the outermost courtyard and to the unsuspecting door here. This typically means fighting a minimum of 5 to 6 defenders, all depending on your approach. Smash that door open to get inside and into a mysterious cave-like area. To help with the door, you might want to pick up the battering ram here, if you don't have one already. Once again, you'll find an offering stone. Place a regular champion lure and wait for a Werehyana boss to spawn. Like before, go into sexy mode, then take it on. By the way, while this boss has slightly less hit points than the first three we defeated, we found him slightly more challenging than the first three bosses. After your victory, you will notice that it does not drop a brand like the other mini bosses. Instead, you receive Ancient Blood. Ancient Blood is one of the requirements to create a tainted Grand Champion lure. A recipe you'll hopefully have learned from Sil the Wanderer by now. Step 8. Your next step is back at the quest hub as you'll need more lures and warpaint. If you skipped fighting the regular version of this final boss in step 6, then you have all you need to proceed. However, if you already crafted a Grand Champion lure and fought the regular Werebear boss, you have to, as we mentioned, take on the Mammoth, Rhino and Panther once more to get another full set of brands. Step 9. Once you have those resources, use the Altar to craft a Grand Champion Lure using a Champion Lure and a set of 3 brands. Then use the second option in the Altar to craft a Malodorous Grand Champion Lure. 
This requires the Grand Champion lore and the ancient blood that dropped from the Verhyana in the fortress. This new lure is special, as a 24-hour decay timer starts as soon as it is crafted. The bad news is that you have to wait for it to decay, as only once it has decayed we'll get the tainted Grand Champion lure we need. At the time of creating this guide, there is no way to speed up this process, unless you are a server admin, but let's assume you're not. We've seen reports that this item only decays while you are online, which is fine if you are on an official or a dedicated server, though if you're playing in single player, that's a problem, as you would need to keep your game running for 24 hours to then get this tainted item. Step 10. Once you have your tainted Grand Champion lure, it's time to buy another potion of the hunt, as to get once again into the boss instance. This trip will be harder than the last though, so yeah, buff up, bring a friend, follower, etc. as needed. Using a tainted lure this time, you fight the boss again, though be prepared for a much longer fight as this version of the boss has a whopping 2 million hit points. Again, it's key to keep healing and have enough stamina to dodge and roll away. Should you die, you will respawn within the instance, so having extra war paint is key, as you will need to engage the boss relatively fast to prevent it from despawning. Once you've hopefully been successful, you will not only get a large stack of fangs, but also a corrupted savage horn. This is the, what we would call, final event reward. Harvest the boss like before, as to get resources and yet another tablet of power. For unknown reasons, the corrupted savage horn also needs to decay for 24 hours before we can get the version of the horn that can spawn the follower, called Gura the Hunter. With the horn on your shortcut bar, you can spawn your new pet. It works just like the frost giant bodyguard you can get in new Asaga. And wow, that's it. It's a long and extensive process to get to the final reward. But there are of course also the other unique event rewards that can be purchased with Gnarl Fangs. To get all of them will require quite a grind. Except for the Verhyena pet you can buy, all other items are scrolls, meaning you will learn a recipe to craft them. Unfortunately, at least for now, all recipes are character and not account bound, so you will lose them in case you start over, and you will need to unlock them again with any other character. If you like our content and would like to see more guides from us, please don't forget to leave a comment, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And finally, if you play on the Isle of Sipta, here are all the relevant locations you need for the event.